from the Marianas Trench to the Great Barrier Reef in 20 minutes? The year is 1998, summer. Racked with insomnia, mostly from hardcore gaming, I would sit up and watch Letterman, then Craig Kilborn, then late night MASH reruns, then settle in at about 2 in the morning to at least three episodes of The X-Files. Probably not the healthiest way to spend the summer, but screw camp or sports or all that other crap, I had mysteries to solve and RPGs to play. Now I find myself confronted by... Fish. Fish doing their damnedest to riff on The X-Files, and maybe Finding Nemo, and possibly some D&D. It's kind of a mess, all set to the beat of a strange, sliding block puzzle game. Well, I remember we killed about a dozen orcs. Orcas? Aren't they a protected species? Not killer whales, Flounder. Orcs are goblins. Actually, goblins only do D4 damage. Orcs do D6. Let's get this straight. From a technical standpoint, it's not tough to find the fish fillets too lacking. The coating seems rough around the edges to the point where just moving a particular item up and down can cause the same dialogue to trigger over and over again, which is fun if you're a jerk like myself. The art assets seem like a direct Pixar ripoff. Some of the extras, like this puzzle game, can be rendered unwinnable if you assemble them in the wrong order due to how the pieces have to move. Audio cuts in and out strangely. There, I'm done being bitter and, you know, critical. So let's get on to the fun part! The Fish Fillets 2 is one of the goofiest, most ridiculous things I've played in some time. Bottled in 1942. A very good year for Frau Schillering's gourmet ketchup. I bet you thought it was a bottle of liquor. The basic gameplay goal is to get agents Guppy and Flounder, can't make this up, off of the screen. Usually this will require pushing, lifting, and sliding a number of objects out of the way using your agents as moistened battering rams. The best part is, the puzzles are actually challenging. I mean, really challenging. You've got some starfish scattered around as prestige targets, but it'll take a good bit of sitting there and thinking things out before you can proceed. Compounding the issue is the fact that Guppy and Flounder are two different sizes and thus require different spaces to maneuver. Drop anything on either of them from a great height or even a small one, and the stage is forfeit until you hit the undo button. Your time and your move count aren't even tracked. All that matters is whether or not you succeeded in clearing the stage, and how many starfish you managed to pick up in the process. This isn't a human skull, Guppy. The shape is wrong. Humans have high foreheads to accommodate developed frontal lobes of the cerebrum. Maybe they just had to make the skull that shape so it, it would work in this puzzle. Please, Guppy, don't be ridiculous. But the real selling point Guppy. is the dialogue between your fishy agents. Some of it is just trying to play up the X-Files angle by making everything out to be a very thinly reasoned conspiracy. Some of it is just absurd riffing on the situation in general. Some of it is outright blaming the player when things go wrong, throwing a hunk of wreckage directly through the fourth wall. And some of it is genuine hints. Music? Pfft, to that, we've got ridiculous D&D references to blather on about. In a game with absolutely nothing to do with D&D, mind. While most of Scully and Mulder's, I, I mean, Guppy and, well, you know. While most of their lines are delivered competently, it sounds like the rest of the cast was recruited from folks who walked by the studio one day and were offered free chips and soda. But I'm willing to look past that. I don't know if this game is just a vehicle for their goofy premise, or exactly what the story is, but I was far more entertained by this jangling abomination than I had any business being. Just... No custard, please. That's a can of worms we don't need to open. Usual. Should you or any member of your team be captured or killed, we will disavow any knowledge of your existence. This message will self-destruct in five seconds. 